Good morning, everybody. How are you? I'm doing great. I slept really good last night, was watching Frontline. If you guys go to Frontline and on YouTube, there's a lot of really cool stuff to watch. Good morning, Janie. Um, and there's no commercial, so you don't have to hear all these stupid ads that come through. Frontline's awesome. They talk about a lot of American geopolitics. And then also Facebook is on there too, talking about the Facebook dilemma, which is how Facebook has created great revolutions as well as created some pretty bad stuff as far as propaganda and interfering with democratic elections. So it's very, very interesting uh, listening to Frontline on YouTube. So anyways, I have a new mission statement, okay? And I had another one, an old one that sounded really like like Landmark, okay? And I, because that's a lot of my inspiration came from Landmark Education, but I need to step away from the jargon, step away from really, uh, I guess, having very recognizable language, which is jargon. And I need to create another way of saying the same thing, okay? So the new mission statement is, and I, and I just kind of just pulled it out of my ass this morning. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get a new mission statement because what I was inspired by was Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg and watching the, the, the first part of Facebook dilemma I was like you know you know I came from Silicon Valley he came from Silicon Valley yes he was at Harvard and I have no degree so it's kind of interesting the spectrum but there really has to be a mission statement there really does so the new mission statement is uniting systems throughout mankind manifesting pathways to indefinite life so what is uniting you look up every single word there's no baggage uniting is just bringing together systems well there's so many different systems out there they're in their what do you call it functional silos okay which is like departments in a company and if the departments are not on the same wavelength they're going to be in their own little functional silos doing their own little thing their, their own little kingdom and then maybe occasionally they'll go and talk to other departments and maybe they'll have some kind of common ground a little bit but they do their own thing and that's why some companies fail so uniting systems and systems could also mean spirit. It could also mean religion. So someone's in the spiritual healing world is no different than someone that's in the Jesus Catholic world. So when you are very like, um, when you're discriminatory or very judgmental about somebody's belief system, you're really being judgmental about your own belief system because you're not recognizing that you guys are actually are talking about the same thing. This is when I know some of you that are really truly like drinking the juice because you're not really you're not upset i mean you it's like this i don't want people speaking in jargon if we can find a way to speak in the same language where we're not bringing in all this jargon from different systems that are out there whether it's the spiritual healing world or the catholic bible and i don't want people bringing it in occasionally but i don't want it to where it becomes something that you're separating yourself from somebody else there is a united language where we can all speak and be on the same page where it doesn't point out a difference okay but you can still have your belief system, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that because we're not really believing anything different. It's just that we want to not have a specific language that then sets you apart unintentionally. Because when people do speak a very specific language that people or a specific jargon, it sets people apart and it triggers different people. So, so anyways, that's what I mean by uniting systems. So that's what I mean by by um, understanding that spirituality and religion are actually the two of the same things. Okay. So uniting systems throughout mankind, so I'm not even using humanity because humanity has its own baggage. People say, oh, it's like a slave type of word. Okay, which I get it, okay. So mankind is just all of mankind. So uniting systems throughout mankind, manifesting, not even saying creating because creating is saying that you bring something from nothing. There is no nothing, we don't live in a vacuum. We are working from the 11 different systems. We're working from the periodic tables. So when you say create means that you're magically creating something like you're doing alchemy. No, we are manifesting um, uh, pathways. Well, what are pathways? I mean, manifesting is where you're basically taking your manifesting. Let's look at manifesting because we really need to make sure we understand this. Okay. And I didn't even look up all the words. So we're doing this as we speak. Manifesting. M-A-N-I-F. Manifesting. 
manifesting to display or show a quality or feeling by one's act or appearance or demonstrate to show exhibit to demonstrate okay so you're distra- you're demonstrating you're expressing so we're manifesting pathways well what's a pathway so we're expressing pathways manifesting pathway pathway okay i mean that's probably easy but we really want to just get pathway definition by Merriam Webster. A course, manifesting a course, manifesting pathways to indefinite life. Now, I'm not even speaking about immortality. There is no immortality because some people speak about immortality, but it really is influencing people to the spiritual healing world. Okay. Immortality, the word immortality has so much baggage. And it's usually connected to the chakra healing crystals, the completely different connotation that I want to have expressed or manifest. So I'm never going to use the word immortality as anything as part of the Jilly Juice world. That will be in the world that it belongs into, which is a spiritual healing world. Okay. So we're manifesting pathways to indefinite life. Well, what is indefinite? Indefinite means that there's no limitation. You don't have an expiration date. What is life? Life is when you are living, when you are, what is life? Life is, life is life. What is life? How do you even explain what life is? (laughs) It's something that you should already know. And it's something that not people like can really express, but say, oh, life is when you're living, when you're, when you're living. Well, what does that mean? So what is life? Life is, is, uh, Definition. <laughs> this would be interesting. Okay. The quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body. So it has to be juxtapositions against death. A principle or force that is considered the un- to underlie the distinctive quality of the animate beings. An organism state characterized by capacity for metabolism growth, reaction to stimuli, and reproduction. The sequence of physical and mental experience that make up the existence of an individual. Okay, so that's what life is. It is the quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body or the fact that you can generate energy <laughs> in some way. Okay, that's pretty difficult. I've never had to really actually define what life is because it's just something that we already know. You know, we know what life is right now I'm living. And death is when something is not alive, it's not moving, there's everything is, everything is, is, I don't know, shut down. Okay, so uniting systems, bringing together systems throughout mankind, all systems, and uh, manifesting pathways to indefinite life. So there's no speaking of immortality, because that has baggage, and it's about indefinite life. So now here's the thing. Does the spirit divide us or does the spirit connect us? Because I've heard about the spirit. Oh yeah, the spirit, the spirit connects us. And I'm like, well, what is that spirit running through? Okay. What is that spirit running through? And that is based upon how well balanced you are and or how imbalanced you are because there are people that would have evil spirits because they have major imbalances that are so um, severe that it manifests behaviors that people who are well balanced will then repel okay and it is an extreme behavior based upon what hormone is present and so we've learned that hormones manifest through love and hate they manifest through adrenaline through depression through you know just like real high octane to completely like no energy low energy and so then you then i was watching of course the the facebook dilemma and one of the the takeaways is the fact that even though on one end Facebook was able to unite, um, was it, I don't remember exactly which country it was, but then they had the Arab Spring and they ousted one of their leaders 
because they got onto Facebook and created a huge movement. And it then toppled one of the regimes out there and the people, the power to the people. Well, where was I going with this? Facebook, um, it unites us and then it also divides us. Where was I going with this? Oh my God. I need to like, it's a lot of information. All right. So where was I going with this? Okay. So, um, so the spirit, that's right. The spirit will unite us and then it will, it could also divide us. Why does it divide us? Let me start over again. So does the spirit divide us or does the spirit connect us? So what is the spirit running through? Because there are people that run that, that, that come from um, different imbalances, love and hate to um, indifference to then depression, to then, uh, what else? Um, high energy and low energy and all of the points in between. And so how does the spirit manifest? Well, it man well, how does it manifest like on Facebook and behaviors? Well, it, uh, you see it in groups. The spirit then, then divides people. Okay, there's my, I was getting to the division portion, okay. Sometimes I just lose my train. So I'm trying to get all these footnotes and it's just so like annoying. <laughs> and so the division is what has caused then because of the, um, of the different hormones that are present. And so, and then an example of that would be when Facebook first came to be, it was great in the beginning when it, it, it when it united the people, but then it became a tool of propaganda. Okay, so it, it depends on what spectrum, you know, you're on and then and then exactly who it is you're uniting and then, and then it, it comes from all the different hormones that are present and we have so many different biochemistries. So, so long story short, I don't know, I was going somewhere with that and then I lost my train of thought, which is fine, but I think I kind of got it back. But why I go to the body first and then the mind and then the spirit is because the spirit should not be something that we lead with first if we haven't got our body right, okay? And this has been something that I've been saying for a while now, okay? And so that's why I've been kind of just being repelled or just walking away from those that are really, really into the spirit world more so than the body. They say they're doing the body, but they're applying the wrong elements like antibiotics or probiotics to the body to then figure out how to deal with their issues, but they still lead from the spirit. And I'm thinking like, if you're, if, you know, if, if your body is imbalanced, okay, then what kind of spirit are you projecting? Like which hormone is going to be present? Okay. Are you going to lead from love, 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 or hate, 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 and all this stuff. And so we have to, when you would think about it, it does come from the body first because the body has to be so clean for the most part. It has to have all of the weaknesses strengthened. Okay. And, and that's what I noticed it because it does start in the gut, the gut brain and then the brain, but everything starts in the gut. Okay. And so some of you can't even think about the spirit until you get through your physical healing. There's no way really you can really just accurately really feel that you know the spirit because what what kind of spirit are you dealing with then when you're dealing with all the gunk in your body? You're getting misfirings. You have anomalies. Some of you are balding. Some of you are aging. Some of you have other issues that are going on. What kind of spirit are you projecting when you have major imbalances? That's why I say first take care of the body. So this, why the spirit divides us, it doesn't connect us, is because we're dealing with so many different biochemistries because of imbalances. And then what happens on Facebook is that people then find their like-minded people, the, the spirit people of their type, and they go and connect with them and they reinforce their imbalances. So you can see, so what Facebook does is, is almost like the biochemistry. Facebook is a, is a, um, is a, is a microcosm or a macrocosm of your, of the, the hormones that are imbalanced. Okay. 
And so this is, this is why I say we need to get the body right first before we actually talk about the spirit. And I, I know it seems very, I don't know, like very uh, controversial to some people, but, um, oh, Janie, you're the one that's laughing. I want to make sure you're the one that's laughing. So I see a laughing there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but this is why I've kind of stepped away from the people that are in the spirit world that have not taken care of their body. Now, I know some of you have religions and stuff, and I understand that if you're Jehovah's Witness, you're Christian Catholic, and I'm not saying that you've, you've picked the wrong religion because you're not totally healed yet, but you're not also pushing it on anybody, and you're just going through what you got to go through, and I and, and maybe J-Juice is reinforcing your spirit. Okay, fine, that's great, but it's not something, good morning, Sharon, that I want anyone to feel like they're being divided. That, 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 that is going to be a separation if there's, so you could, so, so what I'm trying to propose is how do you have your religion, whatever it is, and it may have a, a jargon, but you still feel, you still can convey a connection with those that don't use the same jargon. See, that's what the real key thing is, which I just I'm like thinking like, okay, that's really what the key thing is, is that how do you, you know, be a Jehovah's Witness, right? Or how do you be a Catholic? Or how do you be a, I don't know, a Hindu or a Muslim or, or, or a Christian? And convey that everybody that believes in indefinite life and then believes that the body, mind, and spirit have to be healed in that order to show that there is a united connection. Because if those that believe in death, okay, that think people should die, well, you're going to have a totally different thought process. Okay, you're going to have a total. You're going to be running all of your stuff through a body that's very imbalanced. And so, yeah, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, it does come down to life and death. It really does. That's the only separation because there is life and then there is death. There, there really is no in between. So, so I know that I think all the religions out there believe in life. Now, as far as indefinite life, well, I mean, I think that if you believe people should live, that you're not killing your whole flock, then you believe in life. It's just a matter of this whole thing with the, with the projection of what the end life is and, just like immortality, you can't project immortality, okay? There's no way to predict or project immortality. There's no way to predict or project any type of ending because you're on a continuous, like, you're just living, and every day is like, I mean, there's no yesterday. I mean, there is, but there isn't. All you have is right now. Every single moment is right now. There's no tomorrow because it's not hasn't happened yet. And many things can happen in between now and tomorrow and yesterday is gone. Okay. So all you have is right now. So it's like, it, it's such a, I don't know. It, it's very, very, it's very deep. <laughs> okay. So, so this is why I'm saying for everybody to just get the body right first, 100%. And then your mind is then going to work in a specific way to where you're making decisions, you'll make different types of choices and all that stuff. And then the spirit, see, here's the thing. I have no projection of what's going to happen way down the road. Okay. Some people who still, who are putting the spirit first have some kind of projection or they already know what's going to happen or they already have an idea of what they want. doesn't mean that, that it's going to happen. It's just what, this is what they want. Okay. And I don't, and if I, if I'm doing the JJs, which I am, so I got the body, body right, get the mind right, the spirit will come out in the ways that I don't need to go and read and try to influence. So this is where I'm really coming from now again, is that through the English language, through just my society, my culture, through my evolution and my exposure to the environment, the spirit will manifest itself when it needs to. I'm not trying to influence it. I'm not trying to study what the spirit should be doing or what chakra or what hormone I need to be manipulating to get a specific result. No, it's about the body will, will 
tap into or figure out or tell you through its own organic ways that you're not trying to influence what it is that you need to do, okay? I find that the spirit, okay, whatever that is, my connection to the spirit is really through my dreams. I'm not waiting for some voice out of the sky. I'm not waiting for everybody on earth to be on the same page so that we can all go and, you know, ride off into the sunset. No, I have absolutely no expectation that everybody on earth is going to understand J-Juice and we'll all be connected collectively and then we'll ride off into the sunset in this new world. No, I know there's going to be death. There's going to be destruction. There's going to be joy and love and then indifference and acknowledgement and there's going to be a bunch of stuff. But I also know people want to live. And so before we even get to the where we're going to do collective evolution, collective stuff, we got to get our body right. That's first and foremost. So I absolutely have no desire to manipulate my spirit in any way, shape, or form. Okay? I'm not, I mean, I money is great. We need money to live on in this earth. Obviously, you see, I'm not super money hungry because, and I'm not building my business predicated on keeping this information only locked behind closed doors because there's no way to do that. If I'm going to bring this to the masses so they understand, okay, I, I, it's no point in putting paywalls behind it. There's no point in trying to hide it because why would you want to hide something like this? So I'm not looking to be like super rich because at some point, you know, what, what is rich? Rich is when you're living comfortably. You're not, what is it? consuming more than you're producing okay so i have a different kind of look on that i have to also pace myself if i'm gonna be around for many many years i'm not in this hurry to be going rich and having all this other stuff and whatever and and i want to heal 100 percent. i want to put my energy in my body to be able to then manifest this message in a, such a clear form that even the most you know um imbalanced person can finally get it okay and so and that's right crystal but our bodies are our temples so so it really it does start with the body it does and this spirit really when you think about it i mean when you guys pray to your bibles which i understand you're you're talking you know you're you're really putting out there in the universe that you want to make sure you make the right choices, that you 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 give your, your faith to the universe to make sure that the choices that you're making are going to be the right choices that's going to manifest in your body so you're not suffering. That's no different than somebody that's in the spiritual world in a different you know, context doing the same thing. You know, no different than the people in the worldwide educators. They're no different than the people in the spiritual healing world. No different than somebody in the Jehovah's world. No different than somebody in the Catholic and the Christian world. However, if you believe in death, you believe everyone should die, then, you know, that's not something I can really get on board with. Okay, fine. Then that's your prerogative. That's the only split that I see. Everything else is just noise. So this whole thing with the spirit is very complicated because it has to do with things that we can't really, we can't, it's not tangible. It's an idea, just like immortality is not tangible. It's an idea. It's a theory that there's no way to prove it. Indefinite life, okay, that basically is saying that we are putting together, now this is where the speech comes in, because what is indefinite life? Indefinite life is when, you're, when you are continuously living where the body isn't degrading. And then you're continuously adapting to your environment despite the fluctuations in the universe. Okay? So um, that's true, Sharon. So what is death? Well, death is when the body shuts down. And then how does death manifest, or where, where does, how does death get triggered? Well, it's because of the imbalances of the, well, obviously the body, mind, and spirit, but you have, you have, the human body that has that's supposed to be made up of 62% water, 16% protein, oxygen 65%, carbon 18%, hydrogen 9.5%, nitrogen 3.2%, calcium 1.5%, phosphorus 1.2%, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, magnesium. So you're supposed to have 
electrolytes and oxygen and water. And you're supposed to have a certain amount of, of protein and a certain amount of carbohydrates and fats and minerals and then also bacteria, okay, which actually outnumbers the actual cells in your body, okay? And so if you have an imbalance in any one of these, like let's say you're drowned, so you have too much water in your system. Let's say you, um, you poison yourself with, I don't know, um, too much chlorine, because chlorine is actually part of the, uh, the, the, electric, the first nine elements. So you have too much chlorine in your, in your body, and that's it. That's going to kill you. It's an imbalance, okay? So what is death is when you have such an extreme imbalance that the 11 different systems shut down, okay? So that's what death is. Now you can call it over-mineralization. You can call it anything you want, but it's really a major imbalance. And so, so what is balance? Well, balance is when you keep, balance is understanding that the body has to work in a specific way and you have to have a balance of minerals and water and bacteria and oxygen and fats and carbohydrates and proteins, okay? But how do you determine how, what dosage is and all that? Well, I mean, and that's where you, your body has a specific, a very specific process, it has voluntary and involuntary mechanisms, okay? And so when you have voluntary and involuntary mechanisms, you then have to give your body the food, which then it will, will absorb. And if you don't have any weaknesses, then it'll just continuously be a system that goes through its specific processes and it will absorb what it needs and then expel what it doesn't need. And you have specific systems in your body that, that excrete and expel the excess, okay? And so what is the foods that you need to then create an indefinite life? Now, let's say all of you, let's say you have no weaknesses. Let's just pretend you have no weaknesses, okay? So this is where I created the Jilly Juice formula so we can actually understand it in a mathematical chemistry sense. And so you saw the elemental composition of the human body, and you saw that you need to have a certain amount of fats and minerals and proteins and carbohydrates or macro and micronutrition and oxygen and electrolytes and water and all that stuff. And so jelly juice is basically sodium chloride plus lactic acid over macro and micronutrition, which is cabbage and kale. Okay? And then you're gonna have now if you you know if, if you have basically like strengthen all your weaknesses, then your pain, productivity, and energy will all be completely proportional to each other because you're always going to go into environments or uh, have certain things that you're doing like activities. Let's say like you're a, you're a soccer player. Okay. So when you play soccer and the ball hits you in several different places, that's an upset of homeostasis to where you may get sustained pain and injury, but your body will be able to bounce back, repair itself as if it never happened at all, okay? You get into an accident through no fault of your own because somebody else was driving. Well, you have a strong body and you're, and you're taking in the right elements that will allow you to have the right balance that is, that is part of the elemental constitution of the human body, then you will heal faster and you will, it'll be like you never had that issue at all before, okay? So that's what, that's really where we're trying to go to, okay? Um, but now we got to look at reality. We got to look at people have been reproducing for centuries on weak bodies. So we have generational mutations, generational PTSD, and we keep reproducing on these bodies, then yeah, we're going to have weaknesses every generation. And we're seeing each weakness get compounded every generation. So... So what's going on with these weak bodies is the fact that we are applying antibiotic and probiotic methods that have a direct correlation and proportion to the pain, productivity, and energy. So the antibiotic probiotic method is the fact that we are trying to take away the pain, okay? So pain is always going to be part of life if you're going to be 
going into different atmospheres or different events that may potentially uh, upset your homeostasis, okay? But the whole point is not to take something that's going to stop the pain. The whole point is to actually repair the damage with the right elements, which are right up here, to then strengthen your weakness so you don't have pain. So there's two ways to kill off pain. You go and take some kind of drug or some kind of painkiller that is antibiotic that stops the healing process so you become asymptomatic or you actually strengthen that weakness, disappear it to where there is no more pain because there's no nothing left for the body to repair, okay? So on weak bodies, there, we're applying antibiotic methods and probiotic methods. And what are probiotic methods? Well, those are the wrong, well, the, basically what probiotic is, is just a bacteria. And it doesn't differentiate where you got it from or what kind of bacteria is being paired with to create it, where it's being derived from. So it's just a general word that the pharmaceutical industry uses to apply a certain type of um, methodology when it comes to cures and remedies and therapies. So when you are doing probiotic therapy, you're not really getting to the root cause because you're trying to manipulate the weaknesses in your body to then bring up hormones or circumvent the immune system to get a particular desired result, okay? And it doesn't get to the root cause. So weak bodies are always applying the antibiotic probiotic method. And so, so anyways, so, um, so, okay, so let me, I know I kind of fucked this up a bit, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just practicing how to lead into from one speech, like spirituality. This is where I'm going to be speaking to different audiences, I'm sure out there. And sometimes I might speak to an audience that's full of spirituality. And then I have to then segue into the J juice world. And sometimes it's going to be a hard transition or it's going to be a soft transition. And I, you know, I got to practice how to do these transitions. So I'm going to be kind of all over the place because I'm just used to just going into the, to the material like, like that, but it's about transitions. And sometimes, you know, you're just going to have to just go from one to the other with no real smoothness. So anyways, um, so strong bodies, pain, productivity, and energy. Okay. And weak bodies is antibiotic probiotic method with the proportion of pain, productivity, and energy. So as far as life, what is like, what is life when it comes to the J juice? Well, life is if and only if the human body that's exposed to viruses in like on an exponential level, because you never can get away from viruses, plus the jelly juice to the infinite power that is proportional to the pain, productivity, and energy. Okay. So you're always going to be exposed to viruses. And this is, and this is what you're always going to be exposed to. Okay. And you'll never get away from it because it's all over the world. Everybody has it and, and it's all over the world. And it's also in the vaccine schedules because we have to transition humanity for those that have weak systems to be able to handle their environment and adapt to it. So then we have the vaccine schedule and why it's so much larger 2019 than 1962 is because we didn't have as many prevalent viruses as far as because reproduction, you know, we're reproducing now in the, in the 1980s, the 1990s to the 2019s, we're reproducing on very, very traumatic bodies. So, um, I have Kevin, you're funny. When talking to the empath crowd, just switch the complicated form of letters with some hearts and you'll be fine. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> so, so basically, so the human body, so what life is if, and only if, okay, the human body to the, to the, to the power of viruses, plus the jelly juice to the infinite power, because you always do jelly juice when you're trying to do with an indefinite life. And it's proportional to the pain, productivity, and energy. Okay, so you're always going to go into areas that are going to have a bit of absolute of homeostasis. And then, um, and J juice is an actual probiotic, but it's the right probiotic. And so um, that's the way A, B, and P, B is antibiotic and probiotic. And J juice is the right probiotic because it's not feeding into your candida imbalance. Okay. Um, there are probiotics out there like apple cider vinegar and kombucha and coconut milk and yogurt that will feed candida. So it will actually undermine anything that you think the probiotics are doing. Okay. So what is death? 
if and only if the human body plus viruses to the infinite power plus then the antibiotic and probiotic method that is directly correlative and proportional to the pain, productivity, and energy. Okay? So what you're trying to do is mitigate pain with antibiotics and probiotics. You're trying to circumvent your body, you're circumvent your systems and manipulate it based upon intention. And that's where the cures come from and the immunotherapies and all of the procedures and protocols in the allopathic holistic world that have now been calling themselves functional medicine because they play in the world of discrimination. Okay. So I did write some stuff um, about biochemistries that are, you know, that, that may or may not be aligned. And this is the thing, you guys, it's going to happen to where you're your biochemistry is not going to always be aligned with somebody else because, you know, sometimes drama connects you and really, you know, we, we really must look at what connects us. Okay. What connects you to your friends? What connects you? And you have to figure out, okay, is drama connect you? Is it like what, what connects you? And so let me read this because I want people to really examine what, how relationships are for short term and then how relationships stay for the long haul. Okay. So that way you don't get, make a mistake and assume something that, that really, you know, you shouldn't assume. So, um, so just stay true to who you are. You're not always going to be aligned with the people you want to be, okay? So sometimes biochemistries do conflict. So if they do, don't force anything. Keep increasing your dosages of JJ because that's the only way for you to break through whatever it is that's causing you conflict. So if you're having a conflict, then you need to address the biochemistry to balance you out, to figure out what it is so you can have a clearer picture on why it is that there's conflict, okay? Somebody could tell you what the conflict is, but you're not going to hear it because you're still dealing with all of your imbalances. So then you, now you have to go and solve the problem on your own to figure out what is this person talking about? So yes, there are superficial ways to manipulate your hormones or your chakras to then deal with conflict, but that's not the point of J-Juice. We're not trying to take your hormones and anesthetize you and stop the healing process. So if you're feeling pain in any relationship, whatever it is, it's because you're going through a healing process, you have to face it. And then you have to keep drinking the J juice so you can get a clearer picture on why it is you're having an issue with this relationship, whatever it is. And hopefully, and even if the person doesn't tell you exactly what the deal is, it'll have, it'll, 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 when you clear your head, you'll be able to now finally wade through all the bullshit and then pick out the patterns and the signs of what the person was initially having an issue with. And then you'll see why. Okay. So hold on, let me read the rest of this. So you truly have to feel pain, body, mind, and spiritual pain. And if you're always doing drugs and playing with your hormones, there's no way you're really going to do the deep healing like you want or intend to do. You have to face the pain, guys. Okay? And this is where you're not going to become indifferent because someone can tell you, hey, you know, this is my problem with you or this is my issue with you, and they'll never acknowledge it, what the actual issue is. It will never be acknowledged. It's like it would be, it, that's the block that caused the issue to begin with. They'll be more indifferent because if they actually acknowledge your actual issue with whatever it is, they'd have to face why it is that you're not wanting to be aligned in their world. And that's one of the hardest things about relationships is are you facing up to why you're actually in this relationship? Are you facing up to why, to what, what the conflict is and you want to remedy it by maybe just taking a step back. And if you're on the J juice, do the J juice. Okay. Not everybody that, you know, that is in a relationship is on the J juice. And so then if you have to figure out, obviously those of you that are trying to figure out your relationships, is your relationship worth it to, to continue? And some of you need to get more J juice to then get clear on your choices. 
And some of you have relationships with people who are not on the JG, so that you already have a common ground that you're working towards. So, you know, I mean, the JGs will give you a lot of clarity, but you have to keep up in your dosages so you can kind of see the problems for what it is, not for what you think, okay? They are. And so that's why I say that we really need to work on the body, then the mind, and then the spirit. So this was a hard one, okay? This was a real hard one. So when I speak to like an empath, spiritual healing crowd, I'm going to have to figure out a lead in. Well, that's the lead in is that, you know, I come from the body, mind, and spirit. How can you really have a true, pure, or true, pure spirit that has zero imbalances if your body's all imbalanced? And so that's why I say, and I don't want to come off like I'm like bagging on people, but if somebody is aging and somebody is degrading and they're obese or they're bald or they have other types of hormonal issues. What kind of spirit are you connecting with? The message is going to get all like confused. And then what you're really doing is you're just trying to now connect biochemistries. You're trying to connect other imbalanced people into your world. That's what I, that, so that's why I got away from the spiritual healing world because that's what I was seeing. And I couldn't get behind that. I'm like, how does this guru, this, this, this mentor, who obviously is applying the wrong um, elements to the body to deal with healing and stuff, and they also have imbalances in their physical makeup, which, okay, I'm not trying to bag on them, but how can they talk about spiritual healing? What is it running through? Is it running through major hormonal imbalances? Because I come from a standpoint. Now, am I right? Okay, I don't have to. Uh, people may not believe where I'm coming from. People say, oh, yeah, you can be spiritually aware without having your body be. I'm like, I don't think so because it's all connected. The whole point of the mission statement is uniting systems throughout mankind, manifesting pathways to indefinite life. Well, we have figured out that you have to get your body right to get your mind right to then figure out how to tap into the spirit without forcing it or influencing it or manipulating it. So I understand people have golden, you can have golden nuggets, but that's no different than studying a book, but it doesn't mean I'm going to go in and follow every single thing they do. Okay. There's always golden nuggets everywhere. Okay. And it's no different. Hitler had, a, Hitler had golden nuggets. Doesn't mean that I'm going to go follow everything that Hitler does. Cause that's what really goes on is what happens is, is that, yeah, what J Juice is is picking and choosing the golden nuggets and creating our creating our reality. Okay? And so, but I'm not gonna put all of my feet in and follow Hitler because he had that one golden nugget. That's what I'm talking about. So when people try to pull me into groups or different, you know, belief systems, okay, um, then they want me to follow all of what they're saying. So, you know, when I, when, I, when I do get connected with certain gurus out there, there are certain things that I pick. And I have pointed out certain things like, you know, if you don't know the laws, then, you know, you'll believe all the stories. I've picked that out from one guru, but am I necessarily going to follow everything else that he puts out there? Not necessarily. Hitler may have a great, you know, um, uh, quote, but I'm not going to follow everything that Hitler did. Okay. So there is, so it's picking and choosing the different nuggets from the different people and then creating your own to where now you, which was, which is where the Jilly Juice protocol came from. Okay. It wasn't like I just developed it out of a vacuum. No, it's picking and choosing, but I'm not fully completely putting my whole body and mind and soul in this one person. Okay. That's where I'm coming from is that you have the ability to develop because look at I'm giving you a guidance of body, mind, and spirit. You're gonna put you're gonna have your own way of doing it, but you really have to get your body right and your mind right before your spirit gets right. And then and, and that's where I'm coming from. But some people will believe it's like the spirit first and then the mind and the body or something else. Okay, fine, that's not where I'm coming from. But if you do believe it, that's fine. As long as we're on the same page that we're all going to be living indefinitely, I don't care how you want to position it. But my standpoint is it's the body first, the mind second, and then the spirit, body, mind, and spirit. And then, yes, you take golden nuggets from different places. So I'm not discounting 
everything that people have said, but I'm not going to go and follow every single thing they put out there. And some of you may not want to follow everything single thing I put out there, and that's fine. You'll pick and choose and create your own belief system, okay? And if it works for you, great. I mean, that's, that's what we do is we pick and choose, like we cherry pick what it is that we want to create our reality. Because I tell you what, not everybody believes in my protocol. Some people are eating off the protocol, okay? Some people say, okay, I can, I can do the healing and eat all this junk food stuff, and even though it's organic, whatever, okay, fine. And then, you know, and then you wonder, and, you, and I'm wondering, are they really healing at the level that they are expecting? And maybe they know deep down inside that even though they're off the protocol, as far as the diet, they're not expecting major miracles because they know that they're taking in foods that are off the <laughs> diet. So it's going to slow down their healing process. Okay, th but that's their prerogative. They've cherry picked my information and created their own reality. Some people are doing keto diet with the J-juice and doing you know, the allopathic and holistic type of stuff. And I get that too, they're cherry picking, but they like what I have to say as far as the J-juice, but they're implementing other protocols, which I say not to do, but it's not for me to say that you're bad or wrong because you're gonna create your own reality based upon what's good for you. I'm just giving you a blueprint and then you'll do what you're gonna do. But I don't wanna be pulled into somebody else's world, okay, to where I'm completely enveloped because I have my own mind. Let me be the one to cherry pick and figure out what I want. Okay, and then, you know, and so it, th that's the direction I'm coming from, is that we all cherry pick the information. So everybody has the right to be the, the, the creator of their reality. They do. But I'm coming from a specific standpoint that I don't want people to like now bring in massive amounts of donuts and 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 junk food and all this junk food well you know junk elements not really junk elements but like foods that are over mineralized i get it kevin but there is a specific blueprint okay there is a specific blueprint and the body really has to be very well balanced okay it really does and You can take whatever you want from different people, but just remember that when it comes to the health side of it, you got to kind of look at things a bit closer, okay? Especially when it comes to the health side of it. So then Kevin goes, one thing is clear that nobody has all the answers. If someone is aging and they teach health and they just, they just take go and don't. Well, of course, I understand. That, 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 that's a no-brainer, Kevin. That's what I'm saying. I understand that. That's what I'm saying, cherry pick, okay? Because... It's because that's where that's how I've always come from. I've cherry picked everything for this protocol. Okay, the fermentation, the cabbage and the kale, lactobacillus, they're all therapeutic, all are all, all can stand alone by itself in other contexts. They've been substantiated in other contexts. The the um the diet, I don't even know what diet would actually be similar to anything out there, but the diet, just diet is just it's no, no different than diets that are out there that want to change the programming. Okay. But I have a specific substantiation behind of why the diet is the way it is. And then the healing symptoms, you know, you have people that will characterize healing symptoms as detox symptoms in another, in, in the detox world. Okay. So, um, so everything that I've put together with JJ's has been cherry picked. All right. So that's, so this is why I just, I've cherry picked and created a protocol that has a specific, a specific intention and a specific outcome. And if we get totally distracted by others that are out there that say, okay, you need to do this, 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 and this first, I'm going to say really, truly where I'm coming from, my perspective, and you can adopt it or not adopt it, that's fine. You got to come from the body first. You really do. You know, all the drugs and all the different breathing techniques and all the different meditations, which is great, can work in conjunction, but you're really, because I don't even have to do the meditation or the, I don't do any breathing exercises. I don't do any meditation. I don't do any kind of like whatever people do in the, in the spiritual healing world. I don't do that. I don't feel I need to do that. Okay. I get my body right. I get my mind right. Create the boundaries. Okay. And then the spirit will reveal itself at the times that it's necessary. I don't try to influence it. 
And that's where I'm coming from. And I know where you're coming from, Kevin, because you're in the spiritual healing world. I get it. I totally understand that. And you have people in your world that you're trying to collaborate with in some ways, which I get it, that are in the spiritual healing world. But I'm really trying to say, okay, let's get the body right. Then we'll get the mind right. And then the spirit will then come. Okay. Can you put J juice and do those spirit things? Of course you can. But I'm not coming from that perspective because that's just not the perspective. I don't have that, that background. But you do, Kevin. So maybe you can figure out how to make how to speak to the empaths or not the empaths, the spiritual healers. That it's great that they do breathing and meditation and chakra manipulation. But you don't want to have that undermine your actual healing process. Because some people say, well, hey, you know, you, you, uh, you could have alleviated all of that, that drama around April 1st when you're dealing with the media. If you would have just done this kind of breathing thing or manipulated your hormones this way and you wouldn't have to go through it. But I needed to feel the pain. See, some people don't want to feel pain. And so they'll manipulate their chakras. They'll do all these different things to stop the pain. And sometimes you need to feel pain. It's okay to feel pain. You don't have to do breathing exercises. You don't have to do meditation. You don't have to do like, you know, the painkillers unless you absolutely want to. Okay. The body will make sure that it will heal. And feeling pain is something that is so like, is so like, um, taboo. And so that's why there's so many different remedies and protocols and, uh, and healing groups because nobody wants to feel pain so they'll turn to all the different methodologies that are out there and so what i'm saying is no matter what feel the pain now scott that guy scott that had the 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 swollen mouth he did go get antibiotics but he did give me a, a clue a major major amount of good information he was going through some pain yes he had to he had to finally fold and get the antibiotics but he, but his infection, because it wasn't like it was so like inflamed and it was so like swelling. He he wanted to drain it, but you know he was looking for somebody to go in and 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 puncture it and let it drain. But it was finally draining when the pain was so bad. It was finally actually draining in his mouth. It was coming out of his mouth. So the body found a way to finally let it drain. But he was in so much pain at that point. He just went and got an antibiotic, which I call, I clearly understand. But the body will find a way to heal you and so some of you will have to implement certain things because you don't have the strength to deal with the pain okay so that's why they have these methodologies where you manipulate your hormones and your energy fields and all these different things because that is that is their method of managing their life okay but that's not the standpoint i'm coming from however i mean if you do take certain things to manage your pain. Okay, fine. That's how, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, everybody is different, but I'm not coming from the standpoint of this is first. The spirit world is first. That's where I'm not coming. I'm not coming from that point of view. I'm coming from the body first, the mind, and the spirit is really your hormones and then how you, and how, how it manifests. I mean, and then I know, you know, you can go into the ether and go into all the other stuff, but it really comes down to it's chemical. And I know, it, I mean, this, the whole thing with the spirit is so difficult because it's like, it's so like, it's been so diverse and it's been so like, um, like taboo to really talk about because it it's like talking about religion. Okay. So when you, when people talk about the spirit, it becomes like kind of like a fight. Like you saw me and Kevin were like, you know, he's trying to defend, you know, the aging thing and the spiritual healing and, and all this stuff and, and cherry picking and all this other stuff. And I get it because you feel like you need to defend the spiritual because this is where you came from. I, and I understand that. But I'm coming from the spirit is really the hormones manifesting itself. And so when your hormones are well balanced, your spirit will be well balanced. Okay. So you don't need to massage your spirit because your spirit's already been taken care of through your gut. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Because we're, we're speaking of the spirit as if it was something totally different. And that's where some of these spiritual healers come from. They think the spirit is totally, totally, totally something different. It's totally separate. Nothing to do with the body. Not connected. And I'm saying, no, it's all connected. The body, mind, and spirit are all connected. But in a specific order. And so the body, the mind, then the spirit will manifest because of the body and the mind. Or, yeah, the body and the mind. Okay? And so, and then that's what will then connect you to like-minded people is 
Imbalanced people will then be attracted to imbalanced people. Victims and predators seem to have a, a, a similar spirit. It's in the extremes of the hormones. One begets the other and they interchange. Sometimes the victim will then be the predator because that's how it manifests. It's like when the pendulum swings the other way, when we have to teach our kids empathy because they're so like aggressive and cold. Well, that's going from one extreme to the other. Yes, the spirit is the, electric, the electricity running through your body. If that energy is gone before, then you die. Yeah, that is the, it's all the chemical reactions. Okay, from your biochemistry, and then you're bringing in certain elements such as um, the J juice. Okay, you're bringing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get this. <laughs> you're bringing in specific elements to then create a biochemical manifestation, a chemical outcome. I guess my mom was right. Better life through chemistry, because really chemistry, it, there is no kind of like there. It's not say anything specific so somebody will then fill in the blanks and say well what kind of chemistry drugs or the elements that are aligned with the human body right so um so yeah so th this because your hormones and all of the elements and the bacteria and, and the viruses and the funguses and all of that work in concert together and, and again you have more bacteria in your body than their actual is human cells. The energy is the original immune system. It's chemical, re well, okay, however you want to say it. I mean, we're speaking the same language. I mean, it's not like either or. Um, the hormones is all of the, the chemical processes that create the energy spark, yes. It's, it all works together. They're not separate. Okay. It's not, that's the only thing I'm trying to make a point is, which I don't think you're saying that's separate, but I want to make sure that people understand it's not separate. The body, mind, and spirit are all connected, but the body has to be, has to be very well balanced or what kind of spirit are you projecting? Okay. Now you can talk about things in the universe, but it's still coming from a, from a very specific standpoint. That's why you have to get your, your body right so then you understand how it does change your spirit. That's what I'm trying to also get at is that if you don't change your body, then your spirit's not going to change. It's going to stay the same. But imagine if somebody, imagine if Kevin, if you were a spiritual healer and you had all your malfunctions, okay, and you're trying to put out some spiritual type of stuff, okay, fine. Then you do the J juice. Then your spirit starts changing. Maybe you're seeing things in a different way. Maybe you change your mind on certain things. Maybe the way you deliver certain information is going to change because now you realize that everything starts in the gut and that your mind now is making different choices, is actually gravitating towards different things. And you are now seeing a change in the way you deliver things and the way you put together information. And I've seen that with myself. I came from a very imbalanced spirit in the beginning of J-Juice. It's okay, Kevin. I don't worry about it. We, we figured out the, the texting and the whatever, but I hear what you're saying. No, but I remember in, in the beginning, my spirit was very imbalanced. And so I was anti-vax, totally divisive, bagging on a lot of different people, which, you know, I mean, I had to do it because I had to see, I had to show a difference, a differentiation. But I've calmed down a little bit, a bit on that. But then I started, you know, as I kept progressing in the J-Juice and I am reading more information, opening myself up to more possibilities, then I started seeing my spirit change and then now I get it. There is no, um, awesome Charmaine. It, I definitely, you know, I noticed a change in my spirit, the way I delivered stuff, the way in which I put together information. You know, my spirit changed from trying to, write a thousand words and now I've narrowed down the thousand words into something like this. Okay. This is when your spirit changes based upon your biochemistry. Okay. 
And that's excellent, Charmaine. Definitely changed her perspective and practice. Yeah, I mean, when I can narrow everything down to just a few set of formulas and expressions and things like this, that shows that the spirit can change based upon the biochemistry, based upon the body mind, the body mind type of stuff. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So that's why I I I don't follow. I, I'll take certain things and see, here's the thing. Some people's information from the spirit world will fit within the context of that time. And then, and then it's just something that, that that's like a, one of the stepping stones, but it's not the end all be all. It's just another, it's another brick in the wall. <laughs> I guess that's how I can explain it. So everybody, it's like, you know, Kevin, you have something to offer. Masa has something to offer. Charmaine and you know Janie and all the different people that I've been in contact with, Lillian and Bridget, every single one of you that I've been in contact with or interacted with, Hat Janie has given me a brick in the wall of J Juice. But am I gonna go and 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 just completely envelop myself under each one of these people and then completely adopt everything? No. Every single person has contributed to the Jilly Juice and the perspective of it even my naysayers okay i give them a lot of credit because they really just they uh motivated me to really substantiate and create a pathway to get to this point okay so but i'm still individual all of us are individual that's why i don't chase people down and say okay you must do the j juice you must that's why i don't want you guys to do that i don't want you chasing people down saying you must do the j juice and be so like, oh God, you got to, or you're, you know, the, no, it's like everybody has an individual choice. Okay, everybody does. And we don't want to force anyone, you know, to do this. And believe me, I know not all of you are following the whole protocol 100%, and that's okay. Just get the J juice in, and then you'll see certain things change. And maybe, you know, you see your, your sugar intake change and your cravings and all that stuff. So, but I can't tell you what the JJ is going to do for you. You guys tell us what it's doing for your lymphoma, what it's doing for your cancer disease and chronic illness, all of that. Gone are the days where we tell people what's going to happen, okay? Because we're not doctors, we're not nurses, we're not, you know, naturopathics or homeopathics or functional me medicine people. We're taking in elements and then we're seeing how it manifests and we're watching our biochemistry change. And it's gonna change our facial structure, our hair, skin and nails. It's gonna change a lot. And it's gonna change your thought process. So um, so anyways, I really wanna focus on the spirit because that's one of the hardest, and I'm probably glad I focus on it because it is one of the biggest, I mean, I've been the biggest challenges that I had to deal with because a lot of my relationships throughout the JJ's protocol has been around the spiritual community. Just so you know why I've been focusing on the empaths, why I've been focusing on the spirit and the religion, because that's one of the biggest things that was, that's one of the, the biggest, I guess, interest groups that gravitated towards JJ's as well as my relationships. All of my relationships through the protocol, really for the most part, has been around some kind of spiritual or some kind of religion background and that says something that says that i really need to focus on this to figure out and to articulate why it is that i have to do the body mind first before the spirit comes because there are people that are that are that are in my that are put in my path for a reason and some of the hardships some of the relationships that that come together and break up or need some space is because the spirit thing has been because sometimes it feels like it's like it's either or but no it's about biochemistry it's about alignment it's being aware of okay we're on the same page in definite life but let's not take it let's not overstep boundaries what is the common goal the common goal is that we do the J juice, we experience the healing, we get the information out so other people can experience it and understand and see and then figure out their life and stop the cancer disease and chronic illness. As far as down the road, the end result, if there is one, I'm not worried about that. 
that's not my focus. My focus is the here and now. We have a lot of people who are very, very imbalanced that need to have this information as a choice. Not everybody needs J-Juice, believe me, because not everybody can handle the healing process. But people need to have the choice. And that's my focus, is are you giving people the choice or do you have an ulterior agenda, a motive, because of your religion slash spirit slash whatever it is that you're involved with that J juice is not really your forefront because you have other things that are doing. That's what it really comes down to. So that's, I guess, long story short, my focus is right now getting humanity to where they understand that the body needs to be severely strong. It needs to be well balanced. And then the specific measurable result is, is indefinite life reversing the aging process, reversing all cancer disease and chronic illness, potentially regrowing limbs and organs, even if you're born without them. Um, the whole sexual orientation is not even in the mix because everybody is either going to be able to produce a child that either create an egg or a sperm. And I don't care if you wear a dress or you wear shorts. It doesn't even matter. If you have the ability to produce sperm or carry a baby, you are 100% normal in the context of our society at this point. Everything else is all a social construct, okay? So that's what it all narrows down to. That's what I truly, truly am trying to focus on. I am not trying to go beyond anywhere where I, there's no real substantiation, okay? Because, yeah, and I was raised Jewish, okay? <laughs> I was raised Jewish. But I don't subscribe to any specific religion. Every religion out there and every spirit out there is all the same stuff. Is it life, life, death, and figuring out how you manifest in the world and how you want to manifest in the world, but also recognizing the imbalances. When you're coming from love, 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 and you're an empath, love, 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 oh my God, to the other side of it is hate, 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 total full adrenaline, I wanna kick everybody's ass. Those are imbalances. We have to recognize those for what they are. Okay, we really do. And then when you don't live in the love and hate, you get away from the politics. You realize that everything's about chemistry. And you can't control your neighbor. And all of a sudden, you don't have as many battles that you used to have. Some people have so many battles they're fighting because they think they can control their neighbor. Sorry, you can only control yourself and maybe your children for a certain amount of time. And then at some point, no, you're not going to control your children because <laughs> they're going to have a mind of their own and hopefully a well-balanced biochemistry so, you, so your job isn't that much harder. But really, truly, the battle is within. The battle is not out there. And so it's very difficult People say, oh, yeah, well, I try to drop seeds, and, and that's great. And there's ways to drop seeds without picking battles. And, you know, and I, I've been better at not entering into battles. And if I do just drop a few seeds, because somebody's always going to want to start a battle no matter what, and which I get, because I'll drop seeds, very benign seeds that I think are benign, but someone else will be, like, all triggered by. And they're trying to throw arrows and darts, and I'm just like, Really? Seriously, and then I just unfollow so I don't have any more of the notifications that people just go like, oh my God, you said this. <laughs> so, you know, I really truly try to stay away from trying to start battles or raising awareness, you know, because when you raise awareness about cancer, disease, and chronic illness, all the other politics will follow behind very closely. When you actually reverse your own issues, whether it's the aging process, whether it's cancer, disease, or chronic illness, and you stay on it, and then you speak from a very different platform, people are gonna be like, what? And they put down their arms and they follow you because they're like, well, this battle of chemtrails is really not giving me anything, but hey, they reversed an issue that I've been dealing with my whole life. Oh my God. And then now you, you, you see one warrior just put down their arms and now they're trying to fix themselves. See, that's what it comes down to is how many people can you disarm? 
but that's not where we're going. We, we want to arm everybody. We want to get everybody all riled up in their activism and all that stuff. But what would happen if you actually could disarm each person one by one, where then the war doesn't become a war anymore because no one's armed anymore and nobody wants, okay? So if you're not fighting, no one's going to hurt you. Unless they come to your door, then you just do what you have to do, but that's not going to happen. And if there's other governments out there that are trying to threaten other countries, then our government will do what they have to do and they'll do, they'll do the fight or flight stuff and that's what, they're, that's what we pay them for. But individually... If you can disarm not only yourself, but disarm your community so they stop fighting, imagine how much peace you would have. If you're, if you're fighting for peace, that's an oxymoron. Peace is actually something that you exhibit and exemplify. That's what peace is, is you actually are the peaceful one. Because now that's one less warrior out there. And now you're just giving off information about doing the J-juice and you're going through the healing symptoms and you're seeing these specific measurable results, you're reversing the aging process, your wrinkles are now all smooth skin, you have collagen back in your face, your, your hair now is turning black instead of white, you're seeing major changes in your physical appearance as well as how you, how you look at life and you're not focused on the chemtrails or focused on you know the environment and all that stuff because that's what we have the EPA for. That's what we have all the different agencies for in the government. We have a working society, a civilization for a reason because there are people that, that do look after stuff. And sometimes there's corruption that happens. And then we have agencies and people say, hey, this happened. Th th this is what came out. Okay, here, here's the evidence. And so your awareness is actually going towards so here's what I'm saying if you're if you're gonna show corruption okay if you want to raise awareness about corruption then you make it work to where you see a specific measurable result so if you see some company dumping oil into a river then you go and take a picture of it you see what company it is if you happen to be there and then you turn it into the EPA and then let the EPA go do their investigation. You have just taken, and so it, it doesn't have to go like, oh my God, you know, BP is dumping all this stuff. No, you've taken your power of taking a picture and submitting it to the EPA, and then they will deal with it. And then you go and make sure that your water and everything else is, is okay, and, and, and that's it. There is no war to be, to be fought. But if you're just hearing stuff through the media and you're hearing and you're reacting to all the media stuff and there's nothing to really substantiate, you're just reading articles and somebody else's perspective, then you're creating a war that doesn't need to be fought. Disarm yourself, disarm your friends, so that way we don't have all of these fighters that are fighting for nothing. Utilize the government for what it's meant for. If you see something, say something, but if you don't see anything, then what's the point of saying something? You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I mean, I have, it's, I don't know. I mean, that's my perspective is peace starts within. Peace isn't something that you just force and you fight for peace. And so, yeah, we have these, these, I mean, and, and it, yeah. Because I'm looking, I was watching that Facebook dilemma and then before I got kind of lost in my train of thought because there's so much. Um, the beginning of Facebook, when Facebook thought that they were really like revolutionary in, 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 in democracy and their influence in democracy, the Arab Spring that happened way back in 2012, that was from a Facebook activism post where they did have some one of their leaders resign that was, I guess, corrupt. But then there became the division. So as soon as that leader stepped down, then the division, then the Muslims and the Christians and all the different, you know, sects and groups were then fighting each other, it became actually a chaotic mess, okay? And so sometimes you need to have a leader regardless who does keep the peace. And here's the thing, not all the rumors that are out there are actually true. That's one of the biggest things about social media is that you'll have fast communication and people are just making up shit so they can get people riled up and create a platform and then they act it out in the real world and they're acting from 
misinformation, fake news. I've been, I was a part, I was a exper I was a victim of that, of fake news. Jilly juice isn't harmful. Jilly juice would never kill anybody. But let me tell you, people wanted to characterize that. Okay. And they create a fake news and create a whole activism and all this stuff. And then it, then I went on to Dr. Phil and got skewered there, but hey, that's okay. And so this, so this is what I'm saying is that if you can research yourself and only control your immediate surroundings, that's where peace happens. It happens right in front of you. It's not something that you can go and influence someone into peace. You can't force and fight somebody into peace. It starts right in front of you. If somebody comes at you, then yeah, you have every right to fight back. And so this is what America and the West is, is known for, is to go and help out countries that have that kind of conflict where they are genociding different religions. And yes, we do have corrupt people in all, in all parts of everything, whether the general population or in the government, but there's still a good balance of people. Not everybody is bad. Just like Kevin say, not everything about a person who's aging has something that they, they can't, they don't, that, 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 that they don't have something to offer. However, you know, oh, I hear people. <laughs> However, you know, you got, it's, you're picking and choosing the info, of course. But um, I don't know, I was off on a train, train of thought. Anyways. This is a this is a very difficult subject matter because and, and I'll see this will be something that I have to have to have to really think about and practice in my head how to address this if I ever go in front of a crowd as far as spiritual healing. But I'm always going to come from and actually it's not that, not that difficult. I'm going to come from the body, mind and spirit. OK, and then, yes, everybody has something to offer. However, when it comes to the the healing of the body. So people in the, so here's the thing, the people in the spirit world doing this spiritual healing, talking about theoretics about the universe and about what they think is, is, is on the other side or whatever. Okay, fine. But when it comes to the body, that's what I'm saying. That's where I have an issue with where I can't get on board. So they may have a great saying about sacred geometry, but when it comes to the actual healing of the body, is anesthetizing yourself really truly healing? That's where the conflict is. So I'm always going to come from the standpoint of body, mind, and spirit. You get your body right, you get your mind right, the spirit will be so calm, you're not going to go and cause wars. Because yeah, some of you are passed around articles. And I had to unfollow a few of you because you're still in the conspiracy world. You're still trying to cause wars on your page as far as all the different aggressive articles about, you know, all the different things that go on in the media. You're trying to beat peace into your friends. You're trying to raise so much awareness to where you damage your friends. Okay. That's not where the J juice, we want to create peace within ourselves. And a lot of you aren't on J juice. Like Amy Park Moat. I think you and Robert Moat were on the J-Juice, but I think you guys fell off. Um, and, I, and I had to unfollow a few people because they keep putting out articles that are so aggressive, so mentally aggressive. And then physically, if someone actually acted upon, you know, some of these articles. And where does peace start? It starts right here. Peace starts right within you. And you have to get your body right to... To, to, to get well balanced so your mind can make the right choices. And maybe should you put out this article that's so aggressive and so divisive and so, and so um, violent? No. What's the point? What, what, why be another warrior out there trying to hurt somebody? You know, body, why would you want to hurt somebody? Body, you know, mind and spirit. Because, yeah, some of these articles people put out there are so spiritually hurtful because it's, it causes PTSD. When people put out, like, dog fighting articles or anything that would do with um, abuse of any sort. Okay, so 
So I'm trying to come from the standpoint of body first and mind and the spirit in that order, body, mind, and spirit. And yes, everybody has something to offer, but when it comes to the actual healing process, if your body isn't right, there's nothing that you really can offer me except for, okay, a theoretical, as far as the healing process, no, there's nothing you can offer me when it comes to the healing process. If you are, are not well balanced. So that's why I kind of stay out unto myself because I know that I've seen what the J juice has done for me and the changes that I've been going through. And so there really isn't anything else out there. Now you can share all of your theoretics about spirituality. Okay, fine. But when it comes to healing, no, that's where I draw the line. Okay. I'm not trying to anesthetize myself or manipulate my hormones. And you can say scientifically certain things about that's fine. It's all semantics. But yeah, so I'm hoping that the J juice will just calm down the hearts and minds. Facebook is an aggressive tool to cause wars. And some of you are perpetuating those wars. And I'm hoping that you do the J juice, but some of you won't do the J juice. And then you'll keep aging and degrading and having your issues because you're, and you know, and I can see it in the articles you guys post. You're not doing the J juice because there's no peace within you. There is no freaking peace. No matter how much you say you all, oh, I'm so peaceful. No, you're, the articles that you post, the things that you post is so aggressive and so divisive. There is no exemplification of peace within you. None. So whatever. But that is my standpoint. So now I think I've really got in my head how I'm going to address the spiritual crowd. It's body, mind, and spirit in that order, in that order, and especially when it comes to the healing process. So when you go through the body, mind with the J juice, what kind of spirit, I won't know what the spirit has to offer when someone actually does J juice. That's something left remain to be seen. Okay. So when someone is not on J juice and they're talking about the spirit, you know, okay, they'll have some certain things to say, little golden nuggets here and there. But I would really want to see how their spirit manifests through a very clean body, through a very clean mind. And that means reversing the aging process. So if you're not coming from a point of clarity and a point of cleanliness through your body, what kind of spirit do you have to offer to anybody except influencing the same kindred spirits, same biochemistries, the same imbalances. And that's why you have all these groups on Facebook. You have your Republican, your Democrats, all of your different people. And that's the, the, the division. So those of you that are passing around articles that are all in this whole pro Trump and pro this and anti that you're contributing to the wars in the world. Time to disarm yourself and disarm your friends and family, not to be a victim, to stop perpetrating the damn war. The activism is basically an act of war. Activism is acts of war. Stop starting wars, you guys. Get your body right, get your mind right, and then the spirit will manifest through a very clean body. And then who knows what then will happen. That's the unknown. That's what, that's what you know, we don't even know what we don't even know that I'm trying to tap into. But I do it for myself. Now it's up to all of you to do it for yourselves. So I can't do it for you. I can just only guide you with the stuff that I know about as far as the alignment of the Jilly Juice formula, which is basically sodium chloride dissolved in water with lactic acid over macro micronutrition, and it's the right probiotic because you have a candida imbalance, so there's no sense in you pairing the lactobacillus or the lactic acid with sugar or alcohol or coconut milk. So the salt, the electrolytes is what people are lacking. They're lacking the, the gut bacteria and they're lacking nutrition. Why you start wars is because you guys are malnourished. Why you pass around aggressive articles that are so divisive is because you're malnourished, you're imbalanced. The fact that you blame somebody else for your issues is because you're imbalanced, you're malnourished. If you're aging, you're malnourished, you are imbalanced. 
So I don't care if you reverse an allergy. Have you reversed the aging process? Have you changed your politics to where you're not promoting wars anymore? You're not promoting peace? I don't see it. Some people, so there's like maybe 20 levels. Let's, say, let's pretend there's 20 levels of healing. Some of you that started the J-Juice, you only got to the second level. And the way this world is working, the way how fast this world is, you're not going to be able to survive the next um, segment of life or whatever it is, the next evolution. Because you haven't upped your game with J-Juice. So you're basically a weak body using the ambiotic probiotic method. And then your pain, productivity, and energy all be directly proportional based upon you trying to mitigate pain. And then your the way you uh, manifest your imbalances because of the of what you're doing is now starting wars on Facebook as well as in the world. And then death is basically that. You're because more viruses are going to come into the mix, more pathogens, I guess, more bacteria, more propaganda from Russia or China and you're going to fall victim to it and then by that time something's going to happen you're having an aggressive issue and then you'll be like oh I should have stayed on J-Juice instead of focusing on the stupid politics out there so you guys have a choice you can utilize Facebook for peace and awareness around J-Juice and what it's doing for you or you can start wars okay JJ is about peace. It's about getting through the body, the mind, and then the spirit will manifest itself, manifest itself through a very clean mind. Not through drugs, not through hormone manipulation or chakra manipulation. No, the, the, the hormones, the, the spirit will come out through a very clean body, which means that you have to actually work on yourself and not fall into all these other distractions, these different interest groups. See, Facebook is known for that. Remember telling you, all these different interest groups, the little groups that are out there, and j is no different, okay? We are an interest group, actually. But we are a pro-life in the most consistent sense. We're not the, we're about indefinite life. Not immortality, we're not trying to play that game of immortality attached to the spiritual world, well, no. We're talking about indefinite life based upon the body, mind, and spirit. The body and the mind, and then however the spirit manifests, it manifests. There is no set thing of what the spirit does. The spirit is based upon how your hormones, how well balanced your hormones manifest your behaviors. It's the energy that you that you exude. And sometimes you have to be tough. Sometimes you can be kind. Sometimes you can be empathic. Sometimes you can be aggressive. Because remember, you have the balance of the human body that has negative and positive elements. It's not just all positive elements, not just all salt, okay? You have a mixture of positive and negative elements and bacteria in your body. You can't just live in positivity, love, 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 love. You have a balance. So if you're belonging to a group that's all about love, 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 then maybe there's an imbalance. If you belong to a group that's all about hate, 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 I hate Trump, I hate this, or I hate the Republican or hate Democrat, then you have an imbalance. If you're taking a side, Except for, you know, a side, you know I take a side against death. I don't believe in death. Not because I'm believing in immortality, because I believe that people should live indefinitely. But other than life and death, if you take a side in anything else out there, and you live in either love or hate, because that's an imbalance. When you live in love or hate, that's an imbalance. You have an imbalance. Okay? And I feel it from a lot of different people. I feel it from the trolls, as well as I feel it from the empaths. That's why I've been focusing on the empaths so much, and the spiritual world, because... I know there's imbalances are happening and I have to call it out because that's one of the biggest things I've been dealing with ever since in the beginning. I've had religious groups and spiritual people connect to me and then I have to then repel because it's becoming too much. It's because the imbalance. If there's a way where you can speak without speaking the jargon of our specific interest groups, then that's the united, uh, that's the uni unification of humanity where we're not speaking through our jargon, speaking through scripture or speaking through your empathic or your spiritual healing type of group, but you're actually just speaking plain English. Hey, I reverse this. I see a total, you know, I see now what you mean or whatever. Just speak plain English. Don't speak through your interest. JJ's, you have healing symptoms. You're going to deal with it. You're going to go and do your job. You're going to, you know, you're going to live indefinitely. You're reversing all your issues. You're not suffering anymore. 
I mean, it's just plain, plain English. You're going to go and travel, do your stuff, but you're going to make time for the healing. You're not going to be so like on your little hamster wheel to where you don't make time for healing and they say, oh yeah, I'm healing, but you don't make time for it. You know, you're going to help other people realize that they can actually have control over their insides, but you don't push it down their throat. I mean, it's all a balance. Exemplify a well-balanced behavior. Don't overstep your boundaries. No, you know, when someone says, okay, don't do this, you don't do it. You listen to people around you. You don't just impose. And I, you know, and I, believe me, I, I, I try to listen as much as I can to a lot of you, and then I will make my choices. Okay, so it's like, it's a dance, and I'm just coming from the standpoint of body, mind, and spirit, and the J-juice, and getting everybody on the same, you know, at least the same health wavelength, and the mind wavelength, and the spirit. I, I have no actual expectation what spirit or how you want to explain the spirit. I have none, none of that. That's not where I'm, my head's at. Because how you categorize spirits is divisive, but it's fine. I mean, we all have different belief systems, but the same under the same context that we all believe in life. Because nobody wants to die, even the ones that believe in death, the people should die, don't want to die right now. They just think that, okay, death is going to happen at some point. No, I mean, I what I'm wanting to say is like, no, I don't think anyone should die at all, unless somebody's out of their control. Like you're in a car and somebody just made the wrong decision when it came to turning on a light or something. Okay? So... So that's my standpoint. So yeah, I had to cover this whole thing spirit. And this was a difficult transmission. Difficult. And you can tell it was difficult because it's something I've been wrestling with. And this is one of the biggest things in, in my journey through just self-discovery is wondering what religion. Because I had this whole thing of what religion should I choose? I mean, I was raised Jewish, but okay. I don't really have any connection to Judaism. But I mean, yeah, I've done, I know the Israeli national anthem. I know all the prayers. I've been to temple, at Sunday school. I know all of that. And then, you know, I've been in like Jesus cults, like in Hawaii for a minute, not that I took part in it, but I was just like experiencing that and seeing what that had to offer and understanding what they were trying to do and been, you know, connected with the Yah world and the Jehovah's Witnesses and then the spiritual healers and all the different, you know, those, the Ascension people and all that stuff. I mean, it's like, it's, so this has been a huge journey for me. And then the people that I've been in contact with where I've had relationships very close very fast, close relationships with where drama was a common ground to then finally where I'm like moving past the drama. And then what do I have in common with them anymore? You know, because they don't really believe that, you know, there's certain things they don't believe and I'm coming from a very specific standpoint and they don't get it. And so I have to move on because you either grow with me or you grow apart. I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? When, when, when relationships stay together or when they grow apart, it's because biochemistries are not aligned. It's neither, it's not nobody's fault. It's not like you're right or wrong or they're right or wrong, whatever. It's just the fact that you have different biochemistries, different belief systems, different platforms. It happens, you know, address it and then move on. Don't belabor it. Don't think that there's something that you have to fix. No, it's just, it is what it is. Okay. So, so that's where I'm coming from. It's just, you know, body, mind, and spirit and just getting the body and the mind right. Okay. It's all good. I know Masa. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, it, and it's not like, I don't think it's like people are meaning to attack. I think it's just a lot of, uh, realities being challenged. Okay. A lot of realities being challenged and I'm going to challenge a lot of realities and you guys have challenged my reality too. Kevin's challenged my reality. But ultimately, we're on the same page. So that's why we've, because I'll tell you, you know, Kevin and I had our bouts and we've, but the common ground that keeps us together is the fact that we have the book in common and the fact that he really understands where I'm coming from, even though it doesn't always translate through text. <laughs> and I used to get triggered by the way he texts because, you know, things do get lost in translation. But now I, you know, I, I, I know where he's coming from. So, so. I just want you guys to understand this is that we need to get our body right and get our mind right. And the spirit will manifest however it manifests. And I have no, thanks Masa. I appreciate it. So I have no real specific, you know, expectation when it comes to the spirit. That's why I haven't really said, okay, well, what is the spirit? Cause there's, there's no way you can really explain the spirit except for through science. It's a manifestation of your hormones based upon how well balanced you are. That's really how it is. That's how I see the spirit. 
and how it manifests well i mean it could manifest in your dreams it could i mean i when i was recovering from my weekend i had some dreams uh, stuff from the way past from people in the past that came right into my dreams and i'm like oh my god that was an old thought process about this person from like my from way in the past but i've seen that person you know within the last like couple years and i don't have that feeling about that person anymore but my God, that specific feeling came to surface. That's to me, the spirit talking to me saying, okay, you're going through, cause I was going through basically a healing process because I was a really crazy weekend. <laughs> and so, um, a lot of activity, a lot of stuff, but, um, but yeah, I was going through, uh, a, a healing process. And so the hormones, when it was going through the healing process, brought to surface stuff that needed to come out and remind me, you know, of certain things in the past. I was like, wow. So that that's how I see the spirit. It's not something that I'm going to try to control or try to manipulate. Okay. So that's what I want to get across. And that's the difficult thing when you have so many different religions out there, so many different belief systems out there that are separated by words, but connected by, by the bodies. So how do we connect everybody through the body? not through the spirit because the spirit is going to be all different based upon imbalances and all that stuff so how do we connect humanity through the body and then the mind and the spirit will automatically just follow suit okay if that if that makes sense i hope it makes sense but that was probably the most difficult thing i <laughs> i had to try to explain because all of you guys are lessons to me. Every single one of you that has come in contact with me has been in my world for whatever reason, through whatever point in time. Okay. You have been a lesson for me in so many different ways. And I'm not ever saying I'm never going to have a relationship, but I think that, that, you know, when you have too close of relationships where you're totally involved, then you get caught up in somebody else's biochemistry. And I don't want that to happen either because not everybody is, is can be on the same wavelength or on the same path or have the same kind of biochemistry not to, that you have to but you want to still keep autonomy you don't want to merge into somebody else okay you want to know that okay you can have a relationship with somebody without totally fully enveloping and being like completely you know overwhelmed by another person's energy because that is also you know it, it can be very repelling i married my husband because i want to be enveloped by his energy and i'm fine with it we have a common ground and we have a dog we have a house and we have a life that we have 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 committed to okay but i i i don't want to have such an envelopment of energy from somebody else to where it's like that where it becomes overwhelming and then i then then you lose who you are okay so that is why i kind of keep a certain distance from certain people unless we have something on a continuous basis that we're working on not just the fact that you're doing the JJs here and there and you're kind of introducing it, but you're, you know, da, 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 you know, yeah, everybody's doing that. Not everybody, but a lot of people are doing that. But there are certain people that like, you know, Lillian, she's taking care of the emails because I get a lot of emails and then also moderating to some extent, you know, and Kevin's working on the book. That's huge, important. And Bridget's trying to figure out how to bring this to her people and her world. And then maybe there'll be like some conference calls that I'll be doing and, and she's, really bringing this you know to her to her people and, and and talking about this and and helping me figure out um how i want to get this out and present it and all that stuff so there's specific reasons why there are certain people i have in my life okay <sighs> and masa says plus you are an are an entity and you shouldn't be friends from this group but a leader yeah, I mean, right. We're all leaders and we need some of us, you know, we need to be followers if that's what we need to do because we've figured out that we don't know everything. And and if I don't know something, if, believe me, if I don't know something, I'll follow someone or something if I feel like they have something to offer me and I have something to offer them. And it's a symbiotic thing. So, but it's just some one of those things that I, I've had to come to terms with as far as my relationships with people, okay? Um, no, I understand. Yeah, I, I get it, Masa. I mean, I don't mind being friends. It's just a matter of are we on the same wavelength? I like having friends, but not to where it's so overwhelming. And are we on the same wavelength? Okay, because again, I've mentioned that some people live in the love and the hate. 
okay? And when you live in love and you live in hate and you don't know your boundaries, it's one of those things where, okay, it's it's not that I shouldn't be friends. It's the fact that is the chemistry jiving, okay? But anyways, I'm going to let that go right now. But you guys, do the J juice, okay? The whole spirit world is very, very, very convoluted and subject for misunderstanding, and it can be, you know, very confusing, especially when you have different biochemistries. And so that's why you got it. That's why I say just do the J juice. Masa, do the J juice. Up your dosages of the J juice. Really, you really truly need to. Okay, I'm gonna say that honestly. Some of you need to up your dosages. You really truly do. Okay, because I see imbalances in a lot of you. I don't always say it, but I do see imbalances with a lot of you. And if I can get you out of the empathic side of the world, if I get you out of the whole love, 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 and all this other stuff, and get you to where you're more well bound, not saying that you're hate, 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 but you're not coming from this ooey gooey love, love, love type of stage where you're empathic and all that stuff, you might, you know, you might see something different in where I'm coming from. But maybe you don't, I don't know. But a lot of you need to up your dosage on J juice because you are coming from a very imbalanced, in my opinion, not to say that my opinion is great, but it's, it's, it, it, I recognize it and and it's fine. A few people that don't like you, that's fine. But never mind, never mind. Masa, never mind. Okay. So, okay. I'm not saying okay. I I gotta go, but you guys just do the J juice. Up your dosages, increase it, and hopefully, you know, it manifests in your world that I can see anyways. All right, all right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.